Today, I'm going to show you the basics of optimizing your blog posts for SEO so you can get more Google search traffic and basically get more people on your website. So the first tip is you're going to go to Google itself. You want to actually do some keyword research. You, uh, I'm going to work on a blog post for web design tips. So if I type that into Google before I even hit enter, I do get a bunch of suggestions here I can look at. These are phrases that people are actually searching for. And also, if I decide to follow through with that search, I can actually just scroll down to the bottom of the results and see some more and see some more recommendations there that Google has, other things that people are searching for. I can then also click on these results themselves, go further and look for more recommendations by going to the same place. Now, there are also some a bunch of services out there to do more in-depth keyword research. You can do a couple of free ones uh, at some of these, like places like WordStream, where you can type in your keyword and it'll give you some information and results there that you can sift through, such as how many searches per month, what the competition is like. Even better, you can go to SEMrush. They have a really great service. You get a, If you sign up, you get a few searches a day. You can type that in there and explore also from further from there. Check out how much traffic you get per month. You can also see what the difficulty of the keyword is like to rank for as well. Now, everywhere I go, I seem to find Web Design Tips for Beginners looks like about the best option I have for this current post. So uh, I'm going to stick with that, Web Design Tips for Beginners, and go from there. So I'm going to run with the keyword Web Design Tips for Beginners and optimize around that. Before I do that, I do need to make sure I actually have an SEO plugin installed. So if I go to Plugins, Add New, I can type in and install an SEO plugin. I use All-in-One SEO. So you can simply go ahead and install that. There are some other good plugins out there like Yoast SEO or Rank Math are also very uh, popular as well. Pretty much it comes down to personal preference, but uh, I'm gonna be going ahead with all-in-one SEO in this video, but they all basically do the same thing with a few differences um, when it comes to what I'm about to discuss here. So I've got my blog post open. The first thing I need to do is change the title of my page. So I say, Web Design Tips for Beginners. But I also want my title to be enticing. I want people to actually want to read it. So I better add something on there like increase your sales, something like that. So that way people have a reason to actually follow these tips. But I'm gonna copy this web design tips for beginners. We've added it to our title. Next one we have to do is add into our meta title and meta description. So I scroll down and because I have all in one SEO installed, I can actually go to my all-in-one SEO settings, go to my post title, and it's got the post title in there, which means it's gonna show web design tips for beginners, increase your sales. It's already there, luckily, and automated. Post content, however, I wanna remove that. I'm gonna paste that in there, and I wanna make sure I have that phrase in there so that it shows up in search, and I wanna type a description around it. So I've got use these web design tips for beginners to increase sales on your website and make it more user friendly. Dead simple, easy to follow. So I have web design tips for beginners in the description. And the good thing about these plugins, I've used 141 of the 160 recommended characters. My title has used 52 out of the 60 recommended characters. So that way I'm keeping within the recommended character limit of 60 for the title and 160 for the description. But the next thing I need to do is actually change the permalink, which is the link at the very end of my domain. And that will also help with my search engine optimization. The next is we also need to change our URL slash permalink. So on the right here in WordPress, I have URL. If I click on this, it has this really long link. I'm going to just shorten it down to web design tips for beginners with some dashes in there. We can't really have any spaces. So that way my key phrase is also a big part of the website's URL. So I'm gonna actually run with that. So now I have those that key phrase put in there as well. Now also, you want to have your key phrase in the first sort of 150 characters. Now I've just gone straight into the first tip here because I need to type in an introduction for my post. So I'm gonna actually come up with something which is gonna hook people in. So we've got here a little bit of uh, an introduction about, so you need to increase sales on your blog or website. I can help. Uh, I don't know if this is a good example necessarily. Just type something you think your audience will respond to. But I have here 
some easy to follow, simple web design tips for beginners. That phrase is included very early in my post. So now it's in there. It's sort of mentioned very early on in the post. So I've got it in my title. I've got it in my meta title, my description. I've got it in my URL. And now it's in the, I've started infiltrating the content because we need to focus now on the content of the blog post to optimize it. Now, the next thing is I want to make sure I include it in some heading two and heading three areas. So I've already got it in heading one because I've got the title here but uh, I haven't really got it in the rest of the actual page. So what I'm gonna do is actually put it into a heading too. So I'm gonna say, here are my web design tips for beginners that really work. And I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna make it a heading, and it's a heading too. And obviously I wanna put some information in there because I don't wanna go from one heading to another. So I do a little bit of uh, information kind of introducing the post. So I've added a bit of information in here. So here are my web design tips for beginners that really work and a bit of information introducing the tips. Now the rest of these are actually heading twos. I'm gonna change these to heading threes because what we wanna do is now include it in a heading three tag. So now I need to fit that phrase, web design tips for beginners into a heading three tag somewhere else. Uh, one thing you can do is say web design beginners tip hashtag one colon and you can do that throughout the post but it's not necessarily the best way to go, but um, I could find one of these if I want to and simply add it on the end. A great web design tip for beginners. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't have to be the exact phrase, although it kind of helps when you're analyzing a page to have the exact phrase, but um, it's, it's just a matter of finding where you want to put it. I don't think that's a great place to put it, so I'm going to keep on going. I can also just put it into the conclusion. So I can actually put a little call to action at the end. I'm gonna make this a heading three. These are my top web design tips for beginners that help you. And I can then put a bit of information in the bottom. So once again, these are my top web design tips for beginners. That's in a heading three. I now have that also a heading two near the start. So it's actually in my intro, my headings. And I also wanna make sure it's hid, it's sort of populated throughout the post. And it doesn't have to be the exact phrase throughout the post because it's just, uh, Google's pretty intelligent. It, it'll actually find phrases that mean the same thing and kind of include that. But it also doesn't hurt to try and use it for a bit of consistency. So what I wanna do is add it throughout the post in a few key areas. So I've put in here, well, this is one of my most important web design tips for beginners. So I've popped it in this tip here. I find it again in a few other places. So what I have, don't neglect the to include these web design tips for beginners below so I can add it in there and I can even then try something different come down here go clutter free so I've got here one tip beginners overlook in their web design so I've got web design tip beginners the words are kind of together so it's also good to mix it up like that this simple web design tip for beginners is to pop your call to action at the bottom of every page and I go through and add it in where I can. Also make sure your spelling is correct throughout the page. Go through, proofread, make sure your spelling is good. That's also very important. So I've added it throughout the page. And the other thing too is you want to have related keywords. You can go ahead and do keyword research on related keywords for this, but I mean, if you're talking about, if you're honestly talking about the subject, then it'll kind of populate organically there anyway. So whatever you're talking about needs to actually use the proper words that uh, you would use. Uh, you don't want to get too vague in the way you describe things. Instead of saying it looks good, you can say the web design looks good when it's like this. So just wording a bit more uh, intently can also help with your related keywords on the page. The next is alt tags in your images. Now I'm still working on this post, so it, but if I want to insert an image, what I can do is actually hit enter and hit plus to find an image. So let's say I wanna pop this image in here, this Pexels photo. It says to start a website. Uh, what I wanna do is change the alt text to web design tips for beginners. And I can probably even add tip one in there. I also wanna change the title and select. So now I pop that image in there. I'm gonna center it for the sake of this. And when I click on this here, you'll notice there's an alt text over here, Web Design Tips for Beginners. And you don't want to just do this with every single image, but try to describe a lot of the images and then maybe through a few of them, just pop that key phrase in there and the alt text. 
And if I want to, I can also, let's say I have uh, another image already existing. So not exactly the best uh, image out there, but good for now. If you have an image already there, all you need to do is click on it and you'll find the alt text there. You can add it in. And I highly recommend just reviewing all your images and making sure there's some kind of alt tag on all of them. It doesn't have to be the key phrase, but make sure the key phrase is in at least a couple of the images. And images help to break up content and just improve the user, user experience anyway. So you definitely want images in your blog post. Now, that is pretty much it for the content side of things. Again, let's just review. We wanna make sure we have an SEO plugin. So that way we have our page title, our meta title, meta description, our permalink or URL. We wanna make sure it's in the first 150 words of the blog post in a heading two, a heading three tag, throughout the content and in the alt tags of our images. So that way that keyword or key phrase travels as far as possible. Now, if I go to my all-in-one SEO, there's actually a site scanner installed and a lot of these uh, SEO plugins will have that these days. I can go and type in a focus key phrase with this particular uh, plugin. So I'm gonna type it in here, web design tips for beginners, add my focus key phrase. And it'll actually even give me further tips. So it says here the free key phrase is slightly too long. I'm gonna ignore that because I've already done the keyword research and I think it's actually decent. It does not appear in the first paragraph. I've included it in the first 150 characters, I believe. If I count these characters up, it's easily within the first 150 characters. So I'm not concerned. If I really wanted to uh, satisfy this scanner though, I could easily just hit a space bar and it would then be fixed up. First key phrases in subheadings, use more focus key phrases in your H2 and H3 subheadings. It's actually asking me to add it more into, I've got a H2 here and I've also got a H3 here. So it's actually asking me to, to use it more often. But uh, again, I think that's a little bit overkill. I think that it's very much stated in our page. We don't want to over-optimize. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but overall, we've got 85 over 100 score for our optimization by following these tips here that uh, it's been given to us. Now we can also go through and follow some basic SEO tips here. Like internal links, there's no internal links to my content. So uh, obviously I can add links on this page to other pages of my site. I can also link out to very reputable resources to back up my claims in this particular post, which helps as well. So there's a few things now beyond that that you wanna consider. For one, outgoing links to other pages on your site and to those reputable sites. But also we wanna be making sure we're getting some links from other pages. So go to older pages, older posts link to this new post when you publish it so that way there's a footprint of this post on your website it also helps if you know any way to do some off-page seo so some backlinking you can do that i'm not a huge fan of that i like the idea of organic backlinking but some people who want to take more control and be very seo focused which i completely think if it works for you do it but um, it's a great way to you want to go and build some backlinks by emailing some websites where you think they could benefit from a link to your post. This is a, a great idea of this is if you find other posts linking to a similar resource, email them, ask to add your resource as well. There are things like that you can do. Uh, adding it to comments in blog posts is not a big winner, but you know if that's what you wanna try, you can try it out. But otherwise, sharing on social media, getting good social signals pointing to the post. So you've got this link, you can share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, get a lot of likes and shares. That helps to build it up. Also, if you've got a YouTube channel, popping it in the description of some of your relevant videos. So where you have control, where you can link to this post without simply spamming your links, that can be a very handy way to build some backlinks. Now, also, you wanna make sure your page loads quickly. So your website wants to be on a good web host. You wanna make sure maybe you can use a CDN like Cloudflare, which is free. Make sure you optimize your images and make your design lightweight. So that would be, you wanna keep things simple. You don't wanna have too many images. You don't have too much stuff crammed into the design of your site that makes it slow to load. Things like iframes and widgets and embeds can slow that all down. So it's always good to have a lightweight design that loads quickly. Another thing too is, don't get too carried away with plugins on your website. They really bog you down. I usually try to have five or six plugins max. I've seen some websites built by professionals, mind you, with 20, 30 plugins, absolutely not necessary. Definitely try to keep your plugins light to keep your website loading quickly and that will help your SEO as well. One other tip I have, now I've seen a lot of paid websites do this and it's actually pretty bad. I wanna come down to settings and reading. 
And where it says search engine visibility, make sure this is unticked. You would be surprised how many people as a web designer have contacted me saying, I'm not getting any search traffic. I log into their website and this has been ticked. So you'd be surprised how often that happens. Just double check if you're not getting any search traffic at all, make sure that is unticked. But otherwise, that is a very basic run of the main things to focus on when trying to search engine optimize your posts. There are more advanced things you can do. There are things you can do that can really take your SEO to the next level. That's why there are specialists out there who focus on this. This is the basic stuff that I do, and I get pretty decent search traffic on the websites I build and put this effort into. So it's definitely worth checking out. So that's the video for today, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.